first the dictionary definitions. Who is an empath and who is a narcissist according to dictionary? Empath, a person who has strong capacity for empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of others, often to an intense degree. Psychological characteristics of an empath, empathy, Empaths deeply understand and share the emotions of others. Sensitivity. They are highly attuned to the emotional states of those around them. Intuition. Empaths have a strong gut instinct and can sense the emotional distress in others. Compassion. They possess a deep well of compassion and a desire to help others. Boundary challenges. Big one. Empaths may struggle with setting healthy emotional boundaries, potentially leading to emotional exhaustion. Narcissists, a person who has an excessive and often unhealthy self-love or admiration, an inflated sense of self-importance and a lack of genuine empathy for others. Right away you can see both are opposites. Narcissists often seek constant admiration and validation from others while exhibiting manipulative and self-centered behaviors. Grandiosity. Narcissists have an exaggerated sense of self-importance and often believe they are superior to others. Need for admiration. They constantly seek admiration, attention and validation from others to bolster their self-esteem. <laughs> lack of empathy. Narcissists typically lack genuine empathy and struggle to understand or care about the feelings of others. Manipulation. They may engage in manipulative behaviors to maintain control and achieve their own goals often at the expense of others. Fragile self-esteem. Despite their outward confidence, narcissists often have a fragile self-esteem that is easily wounded, leading to defensive or aggressive reactions when challenged. Now let us see the two dominant drivers of narcissism and empathy. Empaths. Okay. We are considering for the purposes of this study, Rahu as the narcissist when it is in the first house, Ketu as an empath when it is sitting in the first house. We are talking only the first house because that's dominantly where the ego resides. The egoness or the egolessness is empath versus dynamic, narcissist dynamic. So Rahu as a narcissist will give what? Exaggerated sense of self-importance. Rahu in the first house can contribute to exaggerated sense of self-importance leading individuals to overestimate their abilities and achievements. Seeking external validation. Those with these placement may have a strong desire for external validation and may go to great lengths to gain recognition and admiration from others, often at the expense of genuine self-esteem. <clears throat> Illusion of grandeur. Rahu's influence can create an illusion of grandeur, causing individuals to present themselves in a way that exaggerates their accomplishments and status. Materialistic pursuits. This placement may lead to excessive focus on material wealth and positions as a means of bolstering one's self-esteem and self-worth. See, Rahu lacks this. It wants to gain this. Manipulative behavior. Rahu in the first house can sometimes encourage manipulative behavior where individuals use deception or self-promotion as a means of maintaining their self-image and gain the admiration they seek. Ketu as an empath on the other side. Marked in the charts here as you can see. Ketu is in the first house. Here Rahu is in the first house as a narcissist. Ketu in the first house as an empath. What does Ketu behave as an empath? Deep empathetic insight. Ketu's detachment can paradoxically lead to deep understanding and empathy for others' experiences. As individuals with displacement often have a unique ability to perceive and sympathize with the underlying emotions and struggles of others. Non-judgmental empathy. They tend to offer non-judgmental empathy as detached nature to themselves allows them to accept people as they are without imposing their own beliefs or values on others. Emotional healing. 
some with Ketu in the first house may have a natural gift for helping others and heal emotionally or spiritually, offering a safe space for individuals to explore their feelings and experiences without the fear of criticism. Intuitive empathy. Their intuitive nature may enable them to sense others' emotions without the need for verbal communication, making them practically attuned to unspoken emotions and needs. Compassion and acceptance. They often possess a compassionate accepting disposition which can be comforting for those who seek understanding and empathy in their presence. Now let's examine the impact of planets which sit with Rahu in the first house for narcissism. We are talking only about Rahu now, first part. Okay, That's the narcissist dynamic, Rahu in the first house. What if Saturn sits with Rahu in the first house? What happens? Narcissistic tendencies suppressed. Saturn tends to suppress everything. Saturn's influence can sometimes act as a restraining force on the narcissistic tendencies. It may encourage the individuals to be more cautious about displaying overt narcissism. Emphasis on reputation. Saturn's presence may make the individual more concerned with their public image and reputation. They may strive to maintain a facade of responsibility and respectability. Controlled self-importance. While there may be still a desire for self-importance, Saturn can add an element of control and discipline, preventing narcissism from becoming too overt, overt and covert narcissism. We'll see that. Mars. What if Mars is placed with Rahu in the first house? Intensified narcissistic traits because Mars is a driver, Mars is aggressive. Mars can intensify narcissistic tendencies, making the individual more competitive and aggressive in the pursuit of recognition and admiration. Impulsive narcissism, Mars is very impulsive. The influence of Mars can lead to impulsive displays of narcissism where the individual seeks attention and dominance. Mars wants to dominate in a more aggressive and immediate manner, impulsive. Ego-driven actions. Mars may drive the ego to the forefront, making the individual more focused on their own desires and needs, potentially at the exp expense of others. What about sun and moon? As a narcissist, if moon is placed in the first house with Ra, conjunct, what can be the possibility of narcissism there? Emotional narcissism. Moon's emotional depth can contribute to a form of emotional narcissism where the individual's own emotional experiences needs to take precedence over the other. Sensitivity to narcissistic injury. Moon sensitivity can make the individual highly reactive to the perceived slights or criticism leading to defensive or narcissistic reaction, emotional reaction. What is emotion? Narcissistic validation. Moon's influence may drive the need for constant emotional validation, potentially creating narcissistic tendencies in seeking attention and reassurance. Sun. What about Sun? Along with Rahu in the first house. Ego and self-importance. Sun represents the ego. When in conjunction or aspect to Rahu in the first house, it can amplify the narcissistic tendencies. Individual may be having exaggerated sense of self-importance, desire for attention. There is a strong desire for attention and recognition and the individual may go to great lengths to be in spotlight and receive praise and admiration. Charismatic Narcissism Sun's influence can make narcissism appear charismatic, confident, which can draw others in and create a magnetic personality. <clears throat> Resistance to Criticism Individual may be highly resistant to criticism as their ego is closely tied to their self-worth. They may react defensively or aggressively perceived slights. What about Jupiter or Venus along with Rahu in the first house? Jupiter, intellectual narcissism. Jupiter represents knowledge and wisdom. When in conjunction or aspect to Rahu in the first house, it can lead to a form of intellectual or philosophical narcissism. The individual may believe they possess superior wisdom and spiritual insight. Moral superiority. 
they may feel morally superior believing they have a unique understanding of ethics and values that others lack. Proselytizing Narcissism Jupiter's influence may lead to a desire to share their beliefs and wisdom with others in a preachy, proselytizing manner. Resistance to Contradiction Individuals with this combination may resist contradictory viewpoints and may become self righteous when challenged, viewing themselves as the holders of ultimate truth, the ego of Jupiter. Venus Aesthetic Narcissism Venus represents beauty and aesthetics. When conjunction or aspect to Rahu in the first house, it can contribute to a form of aesthetic narcissism. Individual may place excessive importance on physical appearance and beauty, vanity. Charm and Charisma They may possess charm and charisma that draw others in using their physical attractiveness or social skills to gain admiration and validation. Materialistic Narcissism Venus influence can lead to materialistic narcissism where the individual judges their self-worth based on material positions they have. Luxury Indulgence Emotional manipulation. Individuals with this combination may use their charm and attractiveness to manipulate others emotionally seeking attention and affection. What about Mercury with Raho? In the first house, intellectual narcissism. Mercury represents intellect and communication. When in conjunction or aspect to Raho in the first house, it can lead to intellectual narcissism, where one individual believes they are intellectually superior to others. Manipulative Communication Mercury's influence can make an individual skilled in manipulating communication to gain attention and control conversations. They may use language to enhance their image and deflect criticism. Need for Recognition There is a strong need for recognition of their ideas and opinions. Mercury is intellect. They may seek out intellectual debates and discussions where they can dominate and showcase their knowledge. Difficulty accepting differing views. Individuals with this combination may struggle to accept differing viewpoints and may dismiss or belittle opinions of others, contributing to a sense of intellectual superiority. What about the empath dynamic? Now let's see the empath characteristics. So Saturn in the first house with Ketu or the south node of the moon. Empathetic Detachment. Saturn's influence can create a sense of empathic detachment. Individuals with this placement may have a unique ability to empathize with others while remaining emotionally reserved and composed. Practical empathy. Saturn is very practical. They may express empathy through practical actions and responsibilities, such as providing stability and support to loved ones in a consistent, reliable manner. Structured compassion. Saturn can create structured, disciplined compassion where empathy is channeled in a focused, responsible way. They may even make this a profession. They approach empathy as a duty. Difficulty in expressing feelings. Saturn is a dry planet. It does not have feelings. While they understand and empathize with others, expressing their own emotions or connecting on an emotional level may be challenging to Saturn along with Ketu in the first house. Mars with Ketu in the first house. Empathy driven by action. Mars is action oriented. Mars can stimulate empathy through action and physical engagement. These individuals may show empathy by actively assisting others and defending those in need. Mars is a warrior planet. Protective empathy. They may display a protective form of empathy where they are highly supportive or loyal to those they care about. Protective, another aspect of Mars, ready to go to great lengths to ensure their well being. Empathic courage. Mars influence can make them courageous in their empathic responses, unafraid to confront difficult situations and challenges on the behalf of others. Potential impulsivity. Mars is very impulsive. While Mars can enhance empathy, it may also lead to impulsive reactions triggers and sometimes without considering the consequences. What about Sun and Moon in the first house with Ketu as an empath? Moon Deep emotional empathy. Moon represents emotions when in conjunction or aspect to Ketu in the first house it can create deep emotional empathy. 
these individuals can connect with others on a profound emotional level. Sensitivity to others' needs. Ketu is all about other when it comes in the first house. That's what defines an empath. They are often sensitive to needs and feelings of others, making them compassionate and nurturing individuals. Instinctual empathy. Moon's influence can lead to an instinctual empathy, where they respond naturally and empathetically to the emotions of others around them, often without conscious effort. Emotional bonding. They may form strong emotional bonds with others, which can lead to heightened sense of empathy when those close to them are in distress. Sun. Empathy focused on identity. Sun represents one's identity and ego. When in conjunction or aspect to Ketu in the first house, empathy may be closely tied to a deep understanding of personal identity and a willingness to empathize with others who struggle with issues of identity. They may help other themselves find themselves. Empathy as a path to self-realization. Individuals with this placement may view empathy as a means of self-realization, understanding themselves better by empathizing with other struggles and journeys. Empathetic leadership. Sun's influence can make them natural leaders in empathetic roles, guiding them and supporting them through their own empathic understanding of personal challenges. What about Mercury and Jupiter with Ketu in the first house? Mercury, intellectual empathy. Mercury represents intellect and communication when in conjunction or aspect to Ketu in the first house, empathy may primarily manifest as intellectual understanding. These individuals may empathize by analyzing and comprehending others' thought processes and viewpoints. Empathy through communication, they may express empathy through effective communication, actively listening to others and providing thoughtful responses. Empathy in learning. In Mercury's influence with Ketu in the first house can lead to love of learning about different perspectives, cultures, which can enhance capacity for empathy by broadening their understanding, mental, intellectual understanding of the world. Analytical empathy. They may have a knack for breaking down complex emotions and situations into manageable parts, making it easier for them to empathize with specific aspects of others' experiences. <clears throat> Jupiter with Ketu in the first house. Spiritual empathy. Jupiter represents wisdom, spirituality and higher knowledge. When in conjunction or aspect to Ketu in the first house, that's our basis for empathy, Empathy may be deeply rooted in spiritual or philosophical understanding. Jupiter is a philosopher. Empathy as a path to wisdom. Individuals with this placement may see empathy as a means to gain spiritual wisdom and personal growth. They may believe that empathizing with others, they can expand their own consciousness. Jupiter is also very egoistic, by the way. Mentorship and guidance. Jupiter's influence can make them natural mentors and guides, offering empathic support and wisdom to others on a spiritual and personal development. Universal empathy. They may tend to have a broad universal perspective on empathy, seeking to understand and empathize with the struggles of humanity as a whole, transcending individual boundaries. What about Venus with Ketu in the first house as an empath? Aesthetic empathy. Venus represents beauty and aesthetics. When in conjunction or aspect to Ketu in the first house, empathy by this individual may be expressed through an appreciation for emotional beauty in life and emotions of others. Empathy, empathy through art and creativity. They may channel their empathy into creative pursuits such as art, music, literature to evoke and share emotions with others. Compassionate relationships. Venus can influence and lead to empathetic and compassionate interactions and relationships where they are attuned to the emotional needs and desires of others. Empathetic harmony. They may seek to harmony and emotional connection in their relationships above all as a means to create deeper and more meaningful bonds with others. So these are all the basic rules. But now we get into nakshatras 
and see how Rahu and Ketu with these planets can play out in the nakshatras because 27 different signatures are possible. Let's get into that. 